has finally come. In today's video, I'm gonna be painting my MX-5 in one color. I'm so freaking excited right now. If you watched my last video, you would know I've already finished sanding down the whole car, so we're all good there. But I didn't get time to finish sanding down my whole body kit, so I've got to do that first. And just before we get into the video, make sure you guys subscribe because I have a lot of cool things planned for the channel and you don't want to miss it. I got Robert to help me on this because it's a very long and boring job. We started out with 240 grit and moved on to 400 grit to smoothing it all out. All right, so I finished sanding down all of the body kit pieces now. And if you watched my last video, you would know that I originally planned to paint all of these pieces off the car. However, I've had a change of heart because looking at the space I've got, which is not much, I don't really understand how I'm gonna hang all of these pieces up to paint them. So yeah, that is definitely not gonna work. So instead, I'm gonna put them all back on the car in three, two and one everything is back on the car now and as you guys can kind of tell the conditions are not perfect for painting the car there's so much wear it is freezing and there's condensation everywhere but to be honest i'm just making do with what i got i've only got a driveway i can't make the weather go better and also i know that my car's gonna get bashed up when i drift it at trucks anyway so i don't care about it being too too perfect anyways i got a lot of fun things to do tonight so I'm gonna go head down there. So for those of you who might remember, in my last video, we tried to change my friend Stefan's diff in his BMW E46 from a normal one to a welded one, and we completely failed because of a strip bolt. You didn't do it a lot if you did. Oh. <gasps> However, today, tonight even, I'm right by his car, and there is a welder diff in there right now. <laughs> Stefan, send your own car. Let's see it. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. He ain't kicked it out. No, he ain't kicked it out. <laughs> it was close, bro. <laughs> it wasn't it? Nope. He's keys for now. Hey, let me have a go. Turn the 10 keys to a 20. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, you're too dangerous. Oh, you just can't. We, can't, we can't see that behavior on every beat. Yeah, drift car A south. <laughs> One hand on the window like a Batman, oh, you know? Can't talk. Can't oh, get out, Robert! Make our base! Yeah, yeah, come on. Come on, come on. It's enough for me, man. That was sick, me. man. How do you feel? Stressed. You don't have to think of eight. I'm stressed, man. I'm stressed. That was oh. lit, though. That was lit. <laughs> Many bodged up later, my paint booth is finally finished setting up. Well, paint booth. Before I show you the inside, I need to show you all of the supplies that I'm working with. So to start with, I have this really, really tiny compressor, which I actually borrowed from my friend Nasama. It's not the most ideal compressor. I've had a few comments and messages about it being so small and it not working. It's just going to be that annoying thing where I have to just wait for it to fill up, basically. So it works for now. Surprise, surprise, this is also from Masama. I didn't even want to talk too much about this, but as you can tell, yeah, it's not the per most perfect paint gun either. But again, it works. These filters, mixing pots and hose and gun wash, actually, we all got from a paint shop recently the other day. I got the old trusty rubbing alcohol to clean all the surface areas. And this is all my paint. It's actually a two litre kit that I got all together. And somewhere along loads of forums, it said that two litres is enough to paint an MX-5. So yeah, that is two litres. It doesn't look like it's enough, so I'm kind of sending it as always, but we're going to see if it's enough or not. But Anyways, let me show you all the paint booth. All right, so this is our only entry point to the paint booth and I've got toolboxes and jack stands pulling all these sheets back from us. And if we go inside, this is what it looks like. It's definitely not that big. So we are going to be working in sections, starting with the front, as you can tell. And also we had a massive mishap with this gazebo. It was so bent. So there's like blocks of wood everywhere and zip ties holding it up. If you can't tell already, I'm definitely going to be throwing away this gazebo when I'm done with it but I'm just trying to make it work until I finish painting the car. Before I even start painting, I have to clean this gun because it honestly looks like it's been to hell and back. I also have to clean all the surfaces with rubbing alcohol to get rid of dirt and all that other crap. It's finally time to mix up some primer and start laying it onto the car. I cannot wait. Finish putting in the primer into the paint 
on and if you're wondering why I got this silly balaclava on it's because I couldn't find any face mask anywhere and there's no air getting in here so I didn't fancy getting passed out so I've got this balaclava on while I'm painting Is it spray? Yeah, it's gl the glitter is coming out Bruv, it's just bare sparkly like I, I like sparkles so I'm not complaining but this is definitely not a primer definitely not a primer It's legit glitter I think this is like a metallic base coat rather than actually a primer, but fuck it, we'll paint it with that anyway. Yeah, fuck it, let's do it. Three layers of primer later, well, base coat, and this is what we're left with. The somehow four coloured car is mostly grey, silver-ish, which is good. We did have a few issues, but considering it's our first time ever painting a car and the conditions we're painting in, it's actually not too bad. But let me show you what the issues actually are. So this is the first one. I think one of my family members brushed past my car whilst I was showing them it, and it basically left with this big mark over here. And then this is our second one. There's actually quite a big drip mark over here on the door. So I'm just going to sand them two areas down, get them as flat as possible, put another layer of primer over the car, and then finally get on with putting colour onto the car. Let's go. Because this is a big scuff, I have to go through three stages of sanding. I start with 240 grit again to make it all nice and flat. I then move on to 400 and eventually 800 to make it all smooth. I'm ready for some more primer. Because this is only a base coat, as you can see, it is barely covering anything, but I guess it's better than leaving those big marks, right? So I'm done with the repairs now and they actually came out a lot better than I expected. This is the side where someone brushed past and literally you can't tell what was there before. So I'm really, really pleased with that. What do you reckon? That actually came out. Like, look at how glissery. Glissery? Is that, is that a word? Glistening? Glistening. Look how much <laughs> glistening is going on. It looks sick. And then if we go over to the other side very carefully, because I don't want to make any more marks. This is where the drip was. There is still a kind of mark there, but it's not too, too big and it's like kind of smooth anyway. So I'm going to send it. And I actually found another drip mark over here, which is why I fixed something over here as well so i'm just gonna see the shade of this pink and mix it up now because i'm super excited that looks so neon that it looks so neon two pots candy one pot reducer that's fine oh my oh my it's kind of that, that kind of looks red yeah yeah because this is the kind of shade pink i wanted so like in the dark it doesn't look too like pink and then in the sunlight oh oh it looks good it's proper neon oh my god i feel like i'm doing chemistry out here bro one part reducer by the way guys this tool these tools i'm using to mix have never been used and I have cleaned them with alcohol first before you go crazy fucking hell okay right, let's look. go in the sunlight let's go in the sunlight Oh my god! What is it? Oh my god! I'm so gassed. Oh, they wasn't lying when they said that's candy. It looks kind of orangey in this pot, but when I pulled out the spanner, that's the shade that I like. It's so weird. Mm. Should we start on the pink? 100%. Let's do it. Let's I'm actually really scared. Whee! The official first coat of pink, yeah? <laughs> hey, that looks sick. Whee! After so long, my car is finally turning pink. At first, I was a bit nervous because the paint did look quite thin, but once the coat started building up, it looked so amazing. After a very long, painful, but fun week and a few coats of clear later, she is finally finished. perfectly perfect mx5 which is now pink is finally done let's take a closer look at it so it actually looks pretty decent from far away but when you look closer you can tell that there's some patchy pieces and the body kit is a slight different shade of pink and the gazebo touched the paint here here and here also when we removed the masking tape it did lift off some paint and our one and only big massive drip mark over here on the bumper 
To be honest, I did originally want to wrap my car because the whole idea of painting seemed very daunting and expensive to me, so that wasn't my first option. However, I quickly realized that I couldn't wrap at all, which kind of led me to the process I am today, where I did eventually paint my car. It's kind of crazy because a lot of the stuff I got, I did borrow from people, so it ended up being a lot cheaper than I thought it would. My only options were pay someone like three grand to do it properly or pull some strings and do it myself and just, I guess, learn how to paint a car in the process, which is what's happened. So after doing this whole process myself, I really have a lot of tips to tell you guys that I wish I knew before before I even painted this car and it would have made my paint job so much better. So hopefully it will give you guys more confidence to paint your own car yourself or I don't know, just tell yourself to save money and do it yourself because yeah. It's not that bad after all. Tip number one is get a gazebo that covers your whole car if you are outside like me. The fact that I had a gazebo I was grateful for because there's less dust and everything getting in, but because it only covered half my car, it meant that I had to do the front of my car and the back of my car at separate times, making the whole process 10 times longer. But more importantly, because the gazebo was so small, I found that the sides kept touching the paint of the sides and just literally taking off the paint, which is why I have some areas which are just, yeah, messed up because the paint got hit by the sides basically. Long story short, make sure you have space, whether that's a huge gazebo or somewhere inside, this actually made a huge difference to my car painting. So my second tip is that you know how everyone says it's all in the prep? It literally is all in the prep. I'm telling you that now. So basically I thought that a base coat was actually primer. It's not primer. Base coat is not primer. And this was created this different color tone on my car where my body kit is different to my actual panels. Because my body kit was black, what I should have done is gray primer that first with like a Halford spray can and then it would have had the same grey primer effect as the body kit body did on the car. Because we hand sanded everything down, the prep is not perfect underneath. There's still scratches, there's still stuff that's showing through the paint. So honestly, prep time is important. Take time with it because yeah, the painting is the easy part, the prep is the long part. And next time I'm definitely going to get some machine sanding tools because I'm not doing all that hand sanding again. And thirdly, one of the last tips I have is make sure you have some sort of constant light all around the edges where you're painting because we only had one source of light and it meant that we were just kind of feeling our way through painting and it led to some parts being more pink and I feel like I can still see the bluish gray tin under some areas. So definitely try to get that proper lit all around. So as you can tell, there's still a lot of things that I do need to do to the car. I need to wet sand it. I need to take it down off jacks. I need to put lights in it. And one of my mates are coming down to see if they can get the car running, which is super, super exciting. I haven't had this car in so long or driven it for that matter. So this is only the beginning. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming. So make sure you guys subscribe, turn on that post notifications, and I'll see you guys next week for some more Emerald 5 content.